Many times when we talk about sin, people take their minds first to the Old Testament. But they never follow the understanding that God gives in the Old Testament to understand God's concept of sin. But what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law as defined by John. Sin is a transgression of the law. Now, let's move over to the New Testament. What is the law? It started like this. Jesus said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I've loved you. This was before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. He said, I give you a new commandment. Now, when you study the writings of Paul, the writings of John, the writings of James and Peter, you'd notice a striking difference. John carries in his thinking the commandments of Jesus. And he tells us the commandments of Jesus are not grievous. But what are the commandments of Jesus? He says, he commanded us to love one another. So we say, oh, that is a commandment. But when you study what Paul tells us, he says, the righteous man is given no commandment. So what happened to love? He says, you're born with it. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And even John himself actually answers that. Because John says, God is love. And if God is love, and we're born of God, as John also says, then we're born of love. So we are the offspring of love. We don't need a commandment to love. We're born with it. To not love is to not walk according to your, new, your nature in Christ. Now, what law did the woman break when she killed herself? None. You see it? Because thou shalt not kill is no Old Testament. And all of the laws... And commandments were abrogated in Christ Jesus. So you walk in the nature of love. If you love, you will not commit any of those transgressions. Because love is the fulfilling of the law. So why did this woman kill herself? Because she did not know her father. She did not know the love of God. She didn't understand it. She wasn't taught. She didn't understand it. And our heavenly father will not hold her guilty. Guilty of what? There was no law. Do you get it now? There was no law. Sin is a transgression of the law. She broke no law because there was no law. So, does she go to heaven? If she believed in Jesus, absolutely. Thank it's, you. It's killing oneself then. It's killing oneself then. A good way to go to heaven. Look at the problem. Look at the problem. Her problem is not that she killed herself. Her problem is what led to her killing herself. Unbelief, fear, and doubt. So if she's going to go to hell, she'll go to hell 
for unbelief, for fear and doubt. Not for killing herself. Can you see the problem? Absolutely. Because the Bible tells us the first to be thrown into hell, the fearful, the unbelieving, they're the first to be thrown right in. So this is why the teaching of faith is so important. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. That is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's where the problem is. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Pastor Hazard wants to ask a question, so who's going to answer it? <laughs> Go ahead, please. Thank you, Pastor. In 2017, because I've, I've been with you since 2009, so <laughs> it's been a history. <laughs> A glorious history. Praise God. You said something very powerful about the bride of Christ. You said that based on Hebrew 12 um, and on Revelation 21, verse 9 and 14, 9 through 14, you said you proved that the bride of Christ is not only the church because it's uh it's zion and in zion there are angels that are not from the church they are uh, saints of the old testament that are not from the church but they are part of the zion part of um the holy assembly, the the holy assembly of angels. So my question, it was so beautiful. I still um, chew on this message. I, I uh, grasp it and and uh, uh, ponder over it, and and it's so so high and beautiful. But I I have a verse. I don't understand. It doesn't match. In, in my view with what you, so I need to present this to you. So if the Old Testament saints are part of the bride and us, we have the most glorious place in the whole uh, places in the house of the Father, which is in Jesus. We are in Jesus, we, we are in Christ. Okay, but how about John the Baptist. John the Baptist said in John 3, 29, he that has a bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. So <laughs> John says he's not part of the bride. <laughs> So can you explain that, please? Oh, dear Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, Thank you. John is just giving an illustration. He is not wanting to teach about the bride, uh, the church, and the bridegroom, etc. He is wanting to teach about his position with respect to his Lord. So that's what he's talking about. He's not trying to tell us about the church and the bridegroom. He's trying to tell us about his relationship with his Lord. The greatness of this one. So he's saying, um, it's like saying Moses was faithful in all his house. All right. But the owner of the house is greater than the house. You see it? So, whose, whose house we are. 
So if we are the house of Jesus, does that mean we're no longer the bride? Again, it's an illustration of the greatness of Jesus as the Lord who owns the house. And he says, we are his house. Now, you have a house. You have a wife. A beautiful one. A beautiful <laughs> wife. And she is not the house. No, no. You see, so what the Bible says, we are the house of Jesus. That doesn't mean that we have any less position. It's an illustration the teaching about the greatness of Jesus. And secondly, we have to understand his structure because he then becomes a part of the house and yet he owns the house. You understand? Yeah. So that's what it's about. Not really about the teaching of the, the bridegroom and the bride. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm seeing a hand at the top over there. Pastor, sir. And, and then remember something. Jesus also called his disciples his friends. He said, you are my friends if you do whatever I tell you to do. So we also are his friends like John. John is his friend. We are his friends. Why? Because we love to do what he tells us to do. He says, you are my friends if you do whatever I tell you to do. So I no longer call you servants. I call you friends. So we're his friends. All right. Many of us are asking questions that only God we have to understand the concept of kingdom advance. Please write if you're right. The good news is about a kingdom. I don't care what is happening in your life. God is able. is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus.